clothes gone, make your words count. Eric was a history teacher at his local school and was quite easygoing with his students, this method encouraged them more than the usual teaching methods. He was well liked by the school staff and a number of the students as well. However, as always is the case, there were still an odd couple of troublemakers, these two were called Zack and Richard, and they had it in for Eric just because he dressed a little differently from everyone else. Eric's way of dressing could best be described as new age or hippie. Eric was fairly open with most people, but there were still a few things he kept quiet about. This particular day, Eric was doing a lecture on the ancient Maya, and sitting in the front row and making a royal pain of themselves were Zack and Richard. They were making sarcastic comments and generally making a big disruption to Eric's carefully planned lecture. Hey, who gives a fuck about those losers? Teach us something interesting. Zack yelled at Eric. Oops, we forgot, this is history. Richard added, and they started laughing. You will find that if you listened and paid attention, then you would find that the Maya were an incredibly advanced civilization and accurately predicted a great many things, not to mention creating an accurate calendar long before the Western world, Eric said, slowly losing his patience with the two boys, and he did not lose his patience easily. Fuck you, this is a load of crap. Richard said, and he and Zack left the lecture hall. Eric made a few notes on a notepad and continued with the lecture as if nothing had happened. At the end of the day, he found out that Zack and Richard had not been seen all day. Eric wearily pulled up at his small cottage in his car to find out that his front door had been pried open. O-S-H asterisk T, this is just what I didn't need after today, he muttered. Walking in, he saw very little evidence of intrusion until he reached his bedroom. When he entered, he found the room a total mess, a far cry from the usual tidiness he kept it in. His heart skipped a beat when he saw that the majority of his alternate wardrobe was covering his single bed. All his skirts, dresses, and blouses, as well as his lingerie. All his makeup was also emptied upon the bed as well. Great, wonderful, as if I needed this. Eric muttered as he began to put everything away. When he was done, he noticed that his bedside table was conspicuously empty. Shit, they took my book as well. Eric said it in anger and stormed off. Eric walked over to a doorway that led to his cellar. We'll get to the bottom of this, he muttered as he unlocked it and descended the stairs. Eric entered a dimly lit room. The walls were covered with shelves containing jars of herbs, roots, and other more creepy items. At least they didn't find this room. Having the intruders know of my cross-dressing is bad enough, but we can't have them know I'm a mage too. Eric muttered to himself. A large stone automaton appeared out of the shadows. Are you well, my master? I will be. Eric said and walked up to a rune engraved oak pedestal with a bowl shape carved into the top that was filled with water. Eric then picked up the bag of silver dust that was hanging at the side, recited an incantation, and sprinkled a liberal amount of the dust on the surface of the water. The dust gradually took the shape of a humanoid face. What do you wish to know? The face is silvery, smooth voice echoed in his head. Show me the identity of the intruders who broke into my home and their current location. Eric ordered the face. Then, without a word, the face disappeared, the water became silver, and an image then formed. In the water, Eric could see Zack and Richard enter a room and start looking through the spell book that they had taken. Those two have gone too far this time. Eric swore and passed his hand over the water, bringing the spell to an end. He then took his dark green hooded robe off its hanger, 
pulled it on, and tied a cord of woven silver and silk around his waist. Eric then picked up a five-and-a-half-foot wooden staff that was made from an old, twisted, and gnarled tree branch and moved to a large book that sat on his workbench. After finding the page, he was after Eric gathered a few components and then spoke, reading from the book, Ed Voco Magus Eo Ire Item. With the components consumed by the magic, Eric was consumed by a bright flash and disappeared. Zack and Richard were sitting in Zack's room. Hey, I told you he was a fucking weirdo. Not only is he a sissy fag, but he's also got a freaky choice of books, Zack exclaimed. Man, we have got some serious shit on him, I reckon we could even blackmail him. Richard said. Yeah, we could get some good grades and do fuck all the work. Zack said, smiling. Just as Richard was about to speak, they were distracted by a bright flash at the doorway. When their vision cleared, they could see a figure standing there, its face was heavily shrouded due to the dark green robe it wore. In its right hand, it held a long, twisted staff. I wouldn't say that. Eric spoke as the boys saw him. A little uneasy Zack spoke first, Who the fuck are you? The robed figure pulled the hood down to reveal Eric's face. You've gone too far this time, you little bastards. He threatened, you will return my property now. Well, it seems you're more than just a sissy faggot. Richard sneered, we have you, and you will do as we say or your little secrets will be out. Without seeming to move Eric instantly had Richard lifted off the ground by his collar unable to do anything other than look into Eric's angry face. Richard could have sworn he saw Eric's eyes glowing. Listen to me, you little pissant, I have walked this earth longer than you would realize. I do what I do, and I'll be damned if I'm going to be dictated to by a little thug like you. But we know your secrets, if you don't do what we say, we will cause you so much hassle you wouldn't believe. Zack threatened although he was beginning to wonder if he was getting in too deep. Eric sighed and gestured to the spell book, which flew to his hand. You've chosen the wrong mage to mess with. You may know my secret, but you will never be able to tell it. You will pay for your actions and what you have said. Eric spoke another incantation that would return him to his laboratory, at Voco Magus Rodeo. I think we had a lucky escape that time, I think he was just trying to scare us. Zack said he felt a little relieved now that Eric had gone. Eric put the spell book on a shelf next to many other old books of his. Now, let's think of a suitable punishment. How about changing them into lizards? You usually enjoy that, the automaton suggested in its grave voice. No, that's too good for those two. Eric said. Frogs, the automaton said. No, they might find a girl to kiss them, an annoying drawback of that spell. Eric said. Wait a minute, that's it. They thought it's so disdainful that I enjoy dressing feminine, he trailed off, moving to his spell books. Sensing that the conversation was over, Automaton went about its business. He searched through the various books on his shelves, finally finding out who he was after Eric took the book to his workbench. Eric then pulled out two lumps of white clay and carefully sculpted each into a rough likeness of the two boys. Eric then picked up the figure of Zack. Inflecto vestis femina Zack, he muttered, and the figure gained a lifelike quality as well as greater detail while still retaining the color of the clay. Eric then picked up the last figure and spoke once more, Inflecto Vestis Femina Richard. As with the previous figure, this one gained a lifelike quality, its hair also became brunette, and the eyes a piercing blue. With the two figurines now finished, he placed them side by side and placed various ingredients around them. 
Now with everything in preparation, he spoke the final incantation, Inflecto duo juvenis politim factus duo virgo quando atrox virgo. With the completion of the spell, the components arranged around the figurines became energy and were absorbed into the figurines. Smiling Eric placed the two figurines in a glass front cabinet and locked it. What are the effects of this spell, Master? The automaton asked. Whenever either of them picks up an item of male clothing, it will change into an equivalent item of female clothing appropriate to their age, but still feminine and a perfect fit. And when put away or put on the floor, the clothes will return to normal. However, the change may take a few moments to occur. Eric said, they will always settle on the first clothes picked out, no matter what the items of clothing change into. Also if either of them wears the clothes for more than five hours, the clothes will not change back. Eric explained, eventually they will realize they have no choice but to wear them, in fact, once wearing them, they will find themselves unable to remove them until either nighttime or to try on other clothes, etc. However, when they insult anyone of a feminine or female nature, they will both become more feminine in both body and mind, bit by bit, no matter who makes the comment. Already, I have permanently removed what little body hair they had and will never again have. Won't people notice? The automaton asked. Everyone except their families, to them, the boys will have always been like that. Eric said, the more they change, the harder they will find it to act as the thugs they are. In fact, from the very beginning, they will be unable to resist the urge to wear makeup and style their hair as girls would, which will be in their room ready for them, as well as a few other changes. Four weeks later, on Saturday, was the beginning of the summer break from school, six whole weeks of doing absolutely nothing. Zack woke up and ran his hands through his hair groggily. He hated to wash his hair, but his mother had forced him to do so the previous night. Zack climbed out of bed, ready for the day ahead and for the trouble he and Richard would cause. Looking at his desk at the foot of his bed, he noticed a mirror sitting there that he did not remember having, as well as a few other differences in the room, but just shrugged them off. Meanwhile, Richard woke up and noticed the same changes to his room as to Zack's, but for the same unknown reason, he shrugged them off. Zack stretched and opened his wardrobe to decide what to wear, settling on his Beastie Boys t-shirt. He took it out on the hanger and chucked it on the bed, followed by a pair of ripped blue jeans and a ripped denim jacket. Zack then went to his chest of drawers and pulled out a pair of underwear and slipped them on, failing to notice them change into delicate pastel pink satin and lace high-cut pants. Zack was just about to pull on his jeans when he saw them change into a long black skirt. Seeing that his jeans had just become a skirt, he dropped them in shock, and a few moments later they changed back to normal. Shit, just a trick of my mind. Guess I was more freaked than I thought at his threat, he muttered and moved on to his t-shirt, which promptly changed into a red boob tube. Zack looked in horror at what had just happened again. He chucked it down onto the bed, and it changed back into his t-shirt. This cannot be happening, he muttered. With trembling hands, Zack picked up his denim jacket, which changed into a lilac ankle length sleeveless crochet knit duster. Dropping it, Zack began to shake his head in denial and moved to his wardrobe. No matter what he touched, it changed into an item of female clothing. Going back to his bed, he picked up his first choices again and watched them change, this time realizing that this was really happening and not in his mind. Closing his eyes in dread, he opened them again, looked at his underwear, and groaned when he saw the pants on him. Just then the door opened and his mom appeared. Aren't you going to get dressed, dear? she asked, showing no adverse reaction to the fact that Zack was wearing pants. 
Before he could respond, his mother continued, My, that's a lovely choice of clothes, put them on and come down for breakfast. She finished and disappeared. Zack stood there in puzzlement, his mother had not noticed everything that had changed. Sighing, he pulled on the clothes, seeing no alternative. Zack then sat down at his desk to tie his hair back into a ponytail, as was his usual custom. After tying it back, he found himself opening a drawer and seeing all the cosmetics and other things inside. Unable to stop himself, he had just applied makeup to his face, plucked his eyebrows into a pair of feminine arches, and painted both his fingers and toenails. Zack finished by styling his hair into a feathery and feminine style. Recoiling in shock again at what he had just done, he pulled out his spiked leather dog collar in a last-ditch attempt to toughen up his extremely feminine image, it changed into a daisy chain choker. Sighing in resignation, he slipped on his pair of Dr. Martin's boots, which promptly became one-inch platform mules. Shaking with nerves Zack looked at himself in the new full-length mirror on his door, looking back at a very feminine-looking boy, but obviously still a boy. Great, as if it was bad enough having to wear these clothes, why did I have to go and do that to my face? He muttered to himself quietly, and where did that makeup come from anyway? He continued as he headed down for breakfast. Getting downstairs and entering the lounge, Zack saw his mom and could feel himself blushing in humiliation, although the foundation he had applied covered it up. You look pretty this morning, dear, she said, again not noticing anything out of the ordinary. And how is my little sister today? Zack was about to give a sharp retort about not being a sissy, but it died in his throat when he remembered his situation. Fine, was all he could manage. Just then his sister made her entrance and said, Hi bro, nice outfit. She said, Nice lipstick too, I'll have to borrow it at some point. Richard himself was having a confusing and worrying time. Having made the same discoveries as Zack, he was now dressed in a lavender three-quarters length sleeve top and a deep purple miniskirt with a lilac flower pattern. Just like Zack, Richard was fully made up and his eyebrows plucked. I wish I knew why this was happening and how my clothes changed, not to mention where the makeup came from and why I used it. He muttered, and I have to go and meet Zack in ten minutes too. Knowing that he had to leave to meet Zack, he took a deep breath and tried to sneak out of the house without anyone seeing him. Why was he leaving the house like this? He wondered. Richard made it downstairs to the front door and was about to leave the house. Hold on, young man, you're going to eat something before you leave the house. His mom called through. I'm sunk, she'll kill me for looking like this. Richard thought as he reluctantly went through to get breakfast. You're not going out like that, are you? His mother asked upon seeing him. Richards's heart quickened, his mom had noticed. What do you mean? he asked, knowing what she was going to say. It's cold out there, take your coat, she said, partly causing Richard to feel relief and partly worrying him that she didn't see anything wrong with the way he was dressed. Richard's mom handed him his jacket, and dreading what it would turn into, he took hold of it. Instantly, it turned into a metallic pink puffet jacket. Sighing in resignation, Richard pulled it on as he felt an urge to carry on with his meeting with Zack downtown, despite really, really not wanting to leave the house. Richard left in a haze of confusion. First, he got dressed up like a girl because, for some unknown reason, his clothes kept on changing, and then his mother acted as if he had been dressing like that all his life. This was damn weird. On the way down to their usual meeting place, Zack saw several kids from his school, much to his humiliation, they all seemed to recognize him and made fun of him. Finally, Zack got to the fountain in the local park, 
where he always met Richard. There was no sign of Richard, but there was a rather flat-chested and boyish-looking girl sitting there, looking edgy and worried, just like Zack was feeling. Zack sat down to wait for Richard. After a few minutes, the girl looked at him and said, What now? Zack thought. Then the girl spoke in a voice that did not match her appearance, Zack, is that you? Zack's eyes opened wide in surprise. Richard. Then together, they both said, So this happened to you too. Yes, and my mother is just acting like I've always been like this. Richard moaned. You're not the only one, both my mother and sister acted as if this were the norm. My sister even asked to borrow my lipstick. Zack said. It seems that everyone except our families is noticing the changes as being different from the norm, and everyone is recognizing who we are. Richard said. Yep, it seems that our families think this is the norm for us. Zack said, I bet Mr. Nunham is behind this. Probably, he seemed mighty pissed yesterday afternoon. Richard said, how are we to know he's magic using freak? Zack and Richard got up and began to walk back to Richard's place. So you couldn't find any of your clothes that wouldn't change into girls' clothes either. Zack groaned. That's about it. Richard moaned, we've got to find a way around this. Yeah, it seems Eric wants to turn us into sissy faggots just like him. Zack said as they left. Leaving for Richard's place, they rapidly began to walk in a more feminine way, their hips swung as they moved, and in general, they walked like girls. On the way to Richard's place, they passed numerous other people from school who recognized them and got a good laugh, especially the way they were now walking. Finally, they arrived at Richard's place and said, Hey, your mother will probably notice the change in me. Zack panicked. Just then Richard's mom appeared and said, Hi Zack, you look nice today. She said, there's some soda in the fridge if you boys are thirsty. She then disappeared, going about her business. Richard grabbed two cans of Diet Pepsi, and they went up to Richard's room. Upon entering, Zack was not surprised at the alterations to the room. Great, even your mom thinks that I am normally like this. The only people that might have been able to help us think we dress and look like this normally. Zack moaned. After sobbing around for a while and watching the TV, Zack headed home.